ever get that feeling like you're not totally alone, even when you are like physically by yourself? Yeah, yeah. Well, today we're diving deep into that idea that maybe, just maybe, there are unseen entities sharing our world. Ooh, spooky. It is kind of spooky. And we're looking at how that idea, you know, if it's true, might actually impact our lives. Right. Our main source material is an interview with Chrisana Schweitzer. Oh, I heard of her. She wrote, Consciousness Creates Reality. Oh. And she's had some pretty wild experiences. Yeah. Working with people who feel like they're influenced by unseen forces, stuff like that. That's fascinating. And thankfully, I've got an expert in consciousness here with me today to help unpack all this. Happy to be here. Get ready, folks. This deep dive is taking us into unseen energies, shadow work, and maybe even like the power of acceptance. <laughs> Sounds intense. It is, but it's also really interesting. You know, Krishna's work makes you question like, everything yeah it really challenges the way we see the world totally like yeah. what if what we can see and hear and touch is just a tiny part of everything right like the tip of the iceberg exactly okay so let's jump right in right. chris big idea is that a lot of our problems the stuff we struggle with mm. like addiction self-sabotage yeah. it could all come from these unseen entities these beings that feed off negative energy Interesting. So they're like drawn to it. Yeah. Like think of mosquitoes, right? And a porch light at night. Oh, I see. I see. We just flock to it. Okay. That makes sense. But the question is, why would these entities choose to feed on negativity in the first place? Right. Yeah. Why not something positive? Exactly. And Krasana thinks they've gotten separated from some kind of divine energy source. Oh, wow. And they've forgotten their true nature. So they're not like evil that's what she's suggesting just lost yeah imagine you're lost in a dark forest okay and you've totally forgotten the sun even exists Ooh, that's a good way to put it You'd get desperate right that's grasping at any light you could find makes sense chrisana thinks that's what these entities are like and we might be making it worse you know like if we're putting out all this negativity mm. are we basically a beacon for these lost beings I guess so. It all comes down to this concept of resonance. Resonance. Yeah, we attract what we vibrate energy-wise. Oh, I've heard that. If we're always dwelling on negative thoughts, negative emotions, right. we're sending out this signal. A signal. A signal that attracts similar frequencies. Okay. So it's not just like good vibes versus bad vibes. Right. It's an actual measurable frequency. So we're always emitting this frequency yeah and that frequency it can affect our own experiences i can see that but it can also affect who and what we attract into our lives wow so like other people yeah and maybe more than just people this is where it gets a little creepy yeah right <laughs> chrisana <laughs> describes these beings as existing on a different vibrational frequency different frequency like a different radio station one we're not usually tuned into oh that's a good analogy she even calls them get this energy vampires energy vampires yep I know. It sounds crazy. I like that, though. Energy vampires. It really highlights the draining aspect. Right. That feeling of being totally depleted after being around a negative person. Uh, yeah. Chrisanne would say it's not just our imagination. Right. She thinks we're constantly having these energy exchanges. With other people. With people, with our environment, maybe even with these unseen entities. So it's all connected. Exactly. But, okay, let's say for a second that these energy vampires are real. Okay. Why me? Why would they choose me as their target? That's a good question. How do they decide who to latch on to? Well, Krasana's research suggests it's not about being targeted, but more about resonance. Resonance again. Yeah, that idea we talked about, mm -hmm. attracting what we vibrate. Right, right. So if someone's carrying a lot of unprocessed trauma okay. or maybe unresolved anger or they've got these addictive patterns, yeah, yeah. they're more likely to attract entities that feed on those frequencies. Oh, so it's like we're putting out a welcome mat. Exactly. Like, come on in. The buffet's open. <laughs> okay. Now I'm really creeped out. It's a lot to think about. It is. So if these entities are attracted to our negativity, yeah. are we just doomed to be their dinner? Well, not necessarily. Oh, good. This is where Krasana's message becomes really empowering. Okay. Tell me more. She thinks we can actually shift our frequency. Like changing the channel. Oh, I like that. And make ourselves less appealing to these lower vibrational entities. Okay, now that's what I need to hear. It's about taking control. Yes. So how do we do that? Shift our frequency? Well, it's not just about positive affirmations, though those can help. Right. Krasana really emphasizes conscious meditation. Meditation. As a way to connect with our higher selves and align with a higher frequency. Makes sense. 
She also talks about this idea of feeding the good wolf. Feeding the good wolf. What does that even mean? It's a metaphor. Yeah. Basically, it means focusing on positive memories and emotions, Bruh. like shining a light into the darkness. Yeah. You starve the bad wolf of negativity. I see. By giving the good wolf a feast of joy, love, gratitude, all that good stuff. So instead of fighting off these negative entities, we just ignore them. Not quite ignoring them. It's more about shifting our focus. Okay. Raising our vibrations so they're not attracted to us anymore. Interesting. So it's not about fear or resistance. It's about empowerment. Exactly. Taking control of our own energy. Right. This is starting to make sense. It's a different way of looking at things. It is. But how do we even know if we're dealing with one of these unseen entities in the first place? Kurzana says, pay attention to patterns in your life. Uh, Especially the self-sabotaging ones. Oh, I've got plenty of those. Think about it. Have you ever been passed over for promotions? Even when you're doing great work? Uh, yeah, actually. It could be bad luck, sure. Yeah. But what if it's an energetic block? A block. Created by one of these unseen entities? Mm -hmm. Feeding off your insecurities and self-doubt? Oh, wow. It's something to consider? Yeah, it is. But where do these entities even come from? Chrisana mentions the astral realm. The astral realm, yeah. Can you give us, like, an astral realm 101 crash course? What is that place? Well, Chrisana describes it as a plane of existence with, like, different frequencies. Frequencies again? Yeah, and it's separate from the earthly plane and the soul plane. Okay, so three different planes. Think of it like a giant ocean with different depths and currents. Okay, I can picture that. And some people think this is where our consciousness goes when we dream. Wait, are you saying my dreams aren't just random nonsense? Maybe not. That I'm actually traveling to this astral realm when I sleep? It's a theory. A lot of people find it convincing, especially those who have vivid dreams. Oh, yeah. Recurring dreams that seem to have a deeper meaning. Mm. There are even practices like hypnotherapy that supposedly tap into this realm. Hypnotherapy, wow. Okay, so how do I know if what I'm experiencing in a dream is real? That's where discernment comes in. Discern yeah, Krasana really stresses listening to your intuition, seeking guidance from your higher self. So like trusting my gut. Exactly. And look for patterns. Does a certain feeling or entity keep showing up in your dreams? Oh, okay, I see. Do you wake up feeling drained or anxious after certain dreams? I can see how that would be a sign. Those could be signs that you're encountering something more than just random dream stuff. Okay, so we might be sharing our world with unseen entities that feed off our negativity. We attract them based on our energy, and the key is to raise our vibration. Right. So they're not interested in us anymore. Exactly. This is a lot to process. Where do we even start? Well, Krasana says the first step is awareness. Just acknowledging the possibility religion. Okay. that these entities exist yeah. and that they might be affecting us. That's a huge shift in consciousness. So what's next? Sage and crystals. Not quite. Krasan's approach is more about inner work than external rituals. Inner work. She yeah. believes true protection comes from building a connection with your inner light. Our inner light. Your higher self. And that starts with daily reflection. Daily reflection. Got it. We'll dive into that more in part two. But before we go, just to recap for our listeners. Good idea. We've explored this idea that unseen entities might be sharing our world, feeding off negativity. Mm. We've talked about resonance, that we attract what we vibrate and how that plays into our interactions with these entities. Mm -hmm. And we've touched on the astral realm. The astral realm. As a possible origin for these entities mm -hmm. and how our dreams could be a window into that realm. Right, right. It's a lot, I know. It is, but it's also really fascinating. It is. In the next part of our deep dive, we're going to get into Krasana's practical techniques oh, good. for protecting ourselves from these negative influences. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about her approach to shadow work and her emphasis on acceptance. Mm -hmm. Wait. Stay tuned. So last time we were talking about daily reflection, like how that can help protect us from these unseen negative entities. But I got to be honest, this whole thing, it sounds a lot like, you know, demonic possession. I can see why you'd think that. It's kind of freaky. It is a bit, yeah. But Krasana's approach is different, right? It's not about, like, exorcisms and stuff. Exactly. It's not about forcibly removing these beings. Okay. It's more about, like, 
changing the locks on your house. So they can't get in. Yeah, making ourselves less attractive to them. Okay, that makes a lot more sense to me. It's about shifting the energy. What if one of these things is already like inside? Inside. Yeah, what if I've already got an entity attached to me? Well, first of all, don't panic. Okay, okay. Remember, fear is what they thrive on. Right, right. Krasana says acknowledging our shadow selves. That's key. Okay, so integrating those parts of ourselves. Yeah, it's like a form of energetic hygiene. Energetic hygiene, interesting. It makes us less susceptible to these entities. Okay, I'm getting that. But this shadow work thing, it's more than just dealing with our baggage, right? It is. It's about understanding that every part of us, even the dark parts, they have a purpose. Even the dark parts. Think about it. Let's say you're procrastinating on a project. Oh, I do that all the time. Maybe it's not just laziness. Okay. Maybe it's a fear of success. A fear of success. Rooted in this belief that you're not good enough. Oh, wow. That fear, it becomes fertile ground for these entities. So they latch on to that. Yeah. But instead of pushing that fear away, what if you embraced it? Embrace it. Explored it, integrated it into your understanding of yourself. So I'm taking away its power by acknowledging it. Exactly. It's like... Composting. Composting, yeah. Taking something that's buried and turning it into something that helps you grow. Oh, I like that analogy. Krasana believes shadow work isn't just personal growth. It's energetic hygiene. Making our inner landscape less hospitable basically. Right, exactly. Okay, no more running from my shadow, time to face it. That's the spirit. But how do we actually do that? Is it therapy? Journaling. There are lots of paths to shadow work. The key is honesty. Honesty with ourselves. Yeah. What patterns keep repeating in your life? Mm. What emotions are you avoiding? Oh, those are good questions. Where are you holding yourself back? Mm. These questions can help you pinpoint those shadow aspects. The ones that might be attracting this unwanted energy. Exactly. So we're not trying to get rid of these parts of ourselves. Not at all. We're trying to understand them, integrate them. Exactly. And remember, you're not alone in this process. Mm. There are therapists, energy healers, spiritual mentors. People who can help us navigate all that. Yeah, they can be really helpful. Mm. Krasana actually shared a story oh. about a client of hers named Faru. Faru. Okay. He was so afraid to incarnate. <laughs> so afraid of the pain of this world wow. that he got stuck in the astral realm. He got stuck? Yeah. And he was drawn to Krishana. Because? He felt her compassion, her willingness to listen without judgment. That's beautiful. And through that connection, Faru was able to move forward. Move forward on his journey. It's a powerful story. It is. But some of the stuff Krishana describes about these beings, it's kind of terrifying, you know? I get it. Like them taking on these scary forms, looking like demons or shadow creatures. It's understandable to be scared. It is. But remember, fear is their food. Oh, right. It's like looking in a distorted mirror. Okay. What we see is just a reflection of our own fears. Amplified. Amplified, wow. And projected back at us. So the more we resist or attack, the stronger they get. Exactly. Krasana suggests something radical, actually. What's that? Accepting these entities, feeling compassion for them. Wait, compassion? For something that's feeding off my negative energy. I know, it sounds counterintuitive. It really does. But think of it this way. They're stuck in their own cycle of suffering. Oh. Uh, They've forgotten who they truly are, their connection to the divine. So they're lost, like we were talking about before. Yeah, in a way, they're more lost than we are. Hmm. That's an interesting way to look at it. By offering compassion... We change the energy. We create a shift. Exactly. We give them a chance to remember who they really are. Okay, I can see the logic there. It's about breaking the cycle. But how do I go from fear to compassion? Like, practically speaking. It starts with recognizing that we're all interconnected. All connected. Even with these beings that seem so different from us. Right. Everything is energy. We're all part of this web of consciousness. This big web. And when we approach things with love and compassion. Okay. We create this ripple effect throughout the whole web. Wow. So it's not just about me feeling better. Not just you. It's about contributing to a collective shift. Exactly. By raising our own vibration, choosing love over fear. We create a more harmonious reality. For ourselves and for everyone around us. Seen and unseen. Right. And this ties back to Krishana's idea of starting and ending each day with intention. Setting that energetic tone. Yeah, for our experiences. Speaking of setting intentions. Yeah. What about those protective energy shields, like building a force field around yourself? Oh, I've heard of that. Is that something Krasana recommends? 
She acknowledges the benefits of visualization, energy work, all that. Right. But she emphasizes that true protection comes from within. From within, okay. It's about cultivating your inner light, that connection to your higher self. So it makes us less vulnerable to these lower vibrational influences. Yeah. Think about it this way. If you're walking through a dark alley. Okay, I'm picturing it. You're more likely to be targeted if you're projecting fear. Makes sense. But if you walk with confidence, awareness, projecting strength. Inner peace. Right. You're less likely to attract unwanted attention. So it's not about building walls. Yeah. No. It's about like radiating confidence, but energetic confidence. Exactly. And that confidence, it comes from knowing who you are. What you stand for. What you're willing to tolerate. It comes from the work we've been talking about. The shadow work, the daily reflection. Choosing love over fear. All that good stuff. It's a process. This whole conversation has been a lot. I know it's a lot to take in. But it's also really empowering. It is empowering. Like we're not just victims of circumstance. We can shape our own reality. That's the beauty of Krishana's message. It is. It's about reclaiming our power. Over our own lives, over the unseen forces that might be influencing us. I'm ready to reclaim my power. Good. So, what's next? What other tools does Krizana give us for this unseen world? That's what we'll explore in the next part of our deep dive. Okay, good. We'll talk about discernment, how to tell the difference between intuition and an attack. That's important. And how to create a more harmonious relationship with all these unseen forces. I'm looking forward to that. So we've covered a lot of ground, shadow work, frequencies, all that. But how do we actually know if one of these entities is messing with us? Right. Is it all in our heads? Exactly. Well, that's where discernment comes in. Discernment. Okay. Krizana really emphasizes listening to your intuition. That gut feel. Yeah, that little voice that tells you something's off. But intuition can be wrong sometimes, can it? Of course, it's not foolproof. What if I'm just having a bad day mm -hmm. and I mistake my like inner critic for an energy vampire? You do have to be careful about those internal biases. Right, right. But Kusana says to look for patterns. Patterns, okay. Like, let's say you keep having these dreams where you're being chased. Oh, that's scary. Or attacked, something like that. Yeah. And you wake up feeling totally drained, anxious. Oh, yeah. Maybe you even see the same symbols or numbers over and over in your waking life. That would freak me out for sure. It's about those synchronicities. But what if it is just a coincidence? How do we know for sure? It's a tough one. There's no easy answer. Right. But Krishana says, trust yourself, pay attention to those whispers from your subconscious. Okay. And if something feels off, don't be afraid to ask for help. Ask for help, good advice. Talk to someone you trust. Right. A friend, a therapist. Or an energy healer. Right, someone oh. who can offer guidance. So it's about trusting our gut, but also being discerning. Finding that balance. Not jumping to conclusions. Exactly. But remember, even if it turns out you are being influenced by one of these entities, mm -hmm. it's not the end of the world. Oh, good. We're not powerless. We can change the dynamic. That takes me back to Krasana's main message. Consciousness creates reality. If we focus on love, acceptance, that's what we'll attract. It's not just wishful thinking. It's about aligning your thoughts, your feelings, your actions. Okay. With the energy you want to bring into your life. So like if I walk into a room feeling confident and happy, mm -hmm. I'm more likely to have a good experience exactly. than if I'm feeling all anxious and insecure. It's the same on an energetic level. So it's not just about attracting the right people, the right opportunities. Right. We're attracting positive entities too. According to Krishana, yes. The higher your vibration. Yeah the more you'll resonate with beings who are on that same wavelength. Beings of love, compassion, wisdom. That's the idea. I love that. So it's not all doom and gloom. There's positive stuff out there too. Absolutely. But with all the negativity in the world, the news, social media. It's everywhere. How do we create that internal sanctuary Krizana talks about? She recommends things like meditation. Meditation, okay. Spending time in nature. Love that. Surrounding yourself with positive people. People who lift you up. Yeah. It's about creating a space where you can recharge, reconnect with your inner light. It sounds like it's a constant process, this creating a sanctuary. It is. Like tending a garden. Oh, I like that. You have to weed out the negative thoughts and beliefs. Plant seeds of love, joy, gratitude. This whole conversation has been mind-blowing. I know, right? It really makes you think. It does. What would you say is like the biggest takeaway from Krizana's work? For me, it's the reminder that we're not alone in this. We're not alone. Whether it's these unseen entities or the people around us, 
We're all connected. We're all connected. And our choices, our thoughts, our emotions, they all ripple outward. So if we want a more positive world, it starts with us. With our own inner work. Exactly. It's about choosing love over fear, acceptance over judgment. And sending that energy out into the world. That's the key. Powerful stuff. Anything else you want to leave our listeners with as they're processing all this? Chrisana said something that really resonated with me. She said, the universe is always conspiring to support us, even when it feels like it's falling apart. That's beautiful. It's a good reminder. It is. And on that note, I think it's time to wrap up this deep dive. Into the unseen. It has been a wild ride. We've explored some pretty big ideas, and I know it's a lot to absorb. It is a lot. But I hope this conversation has sparked your curiosity. Made you think about things a little differently. And empowered you to be more conscious of your own energy, your own well-being. It's all about taking control. And remember, if you're feeling overwhelmed by any of this, you're not alone. There's support out there. Reach out to a friend, a therapist, a mentor, whoever feels right. There's a whole community of people on this journey with you. Exactly. And don't forget the power of simple practices like gratitude, forgiveness. Those can make a world of difference. They can. Thank you so much for joining me on this deep dive. It's been my pleasure. And to all our listeners, thank you for tuning in. We appreciate you. We hope this conversation has inspired you to explore the unseen world. With curiosity and courage. Until next time, keep seeking, keep questioning, and keep diving deep.